Yeah, there you go. All right. So um, this is the letter that the, um, the Chief Justice wrote to the uh, Judicial Council. We just wanted to show this to you, and then we will show you the letter that you can read with us. Okay, so here we go. So this, these are the contents. It's a, a petition to investigate statements allegedly made by Dominic Ayeni. The attention of his lordship, the Chief Justice, has been drawn by Dominic Ayeni during a panel discussion on presidential election petitions and their impact on Africa's democracy. During this discussion, Dr. Ayeni questioned the independence of the judiciary due to the manner the Supreme Court adjudicated the 2020 election petition. According to him, the Supreme, Court the Supreme Court's failure to apply the rules of procedure as well as the consistent and continuous dismissal of the petitioner's applications or reliefs were the basis of his accession. These comments are made against the backdrop of the Supreme Court discharging Dominic Aini on a charge of contempt for similar comments made against members of the Supreme Court during the election petition hearing. Dr. Aini apologized profusely when he appeared before the court on the contempt charge and admitted to have made comments which were unbecoming of a lawyer of his standing and a former deputy attorney general. His lordship, the chief justice, therefore finds his alleged disparaging comment totally unacceptable and would like to you, the General Legal Counsel, to investigate this matter further. Please find attached a copy of an extract from an article published on myjoyonline.com. Now, so this is the, um, this is the letter from the, uh, the Lord Chief Justice. So now here, let's, let's hear the story. So the story is that the Chief Justice is complaining about Dr. Dominic Aini, uh, who we hosted on this show during the election petition. I'm sure you remember that he, was, he gave us a very uh, erudite uh, expression of the, the petitioner's case before the court. Dr. Aini, during the court process, was held before the court one time over allegations of uh, contempt of court, and he went to the court and he spoke. We have a seven-minute video reminding you of that day's event. It was a Monday, and Dr. Aini was held before the court with his counsel, uh, Mr. Bram Labi. They went before the court, and, and whatever happened, we'll show to you. Okay, so that, because of what happened, Dr. Aini was excused, and he was not punished for the, the charges of contempt. Okay, now, the Chief Justice complaint is that following that February event and following the end of the election petition, uh, sometime in May, a civil society organization, the CDD, decided to organize a forum in partnership with uh, Multimedia, I believe. They organized the forum and uh, persons and lawyers connected with the election petition were selected to speak about various themes about the election petition. Dr. Aini, in his concluding remarks, is reported to have made what the Chief Justice calls disparaging remarks. And the Chief Justice is building on the earlier contempt case and he is looking at Dr. Ahini's apology before the court for similar comments he had made and a repetition of those comments that he had made. And he's therefore asking the General Legal Counsel to have a look at Dr. Ahini's comments. So let's begin with the story, with the video evidence. Let's go back to the court on Monday, 20th February 2020, as part of the election petition. This is what happened. Honorable Dr. Ahini, please, you have been someone here. by this court to show cause why it should not be committed for contempt. Yes, because on the 16th of February 2021, we made certain statements which were very, very scandalous of the court. Sorry. Yes, we, we have exercised restraint in invoking our jurisdiction to always be uh, committing people for contempt for obvious reasons. The other time, I think you were here when I drew the attention of uh, Mr. Frank Davis. I think so also, yes, lawyer Pong, then uh, Marietta, a former learned attorney general. I drew the attention and they stopped. But then, uh, from nowhere, you also jump in onto the free end. You made certain scandalous statement in which the, the bench thought that it was least expected of somebody who held a very high office as the leader of the bar, 
when the Attorney General was not present. The Bar Association is just an association, but the Attorney General is the head of the Bar. Yes, in every common law jurisdiction. So that is one of the enviable positions at the Bar. Yes, I know the lead counsel was a president of the Bar, but Attorney General, somebody who has acted as Attorney General, is the head of the Bar, not the Bar Association president. And we, we, we want you to tell us whether you did say those words. Then you proceed from there. My Lord Chief Justice, um, I did say those words. Um, my attention was drawn to the fact that I might have crossed the line by Mr. Frank Davis. And your Lordship, on the advice and consultation with my counsel, I have written to the court rendering an unqualified apology. I delivered that letter this morning to register of the Supreme Court to bring it to your Lordship's attention. Do you have copies of the letter? And uh, we've circulated it. Yes, we are, we, we are comfortable with the apology, but we want to make certain consequences of this. Yes, Mr. Bicham, <coughs> yes, you, you, you can be heard. Yes, my Lord. With respect, our client has no excuse. Personally, as lead counsel for him, I was very disappointed at the article that I read last week and was deeply distressed when he called me last night. And I thought it was because I had made certain disparaging remarks, expecting some action to stop this uh, canker in the profession. It was to tell me that he had realized the error of his ways and pleaded for me to join him to render an unqualified apology to this court. He makes no excuses for that. He admits he is wrong and has been wrong he re deeply regrets the, the harm done to his profession, the disrespect shown to the court, and to also his, to the country. I have his, his instructions to render his unqualified apology to every member of the Supreme Court, and indeed the judiciary of Ghana, and to the legal profession and people of Ghana that he is awfully sorry for what he has done. He is deeply remorseful. And he deeply regrets what he's done. So, my Lord, our prayer is, yes, true justice has to be done. But we ask you to temper justice with mercy. So, you are a former president of the Donaba Association, is that right? That is my Lord. Um, I have been worried uh, for some time now, um, listening to um, people granting interviews to the media uh, and not any ordinary people or lawyers but people who have occupied very high position in this country and um, we have to decide where we want to go as a country in my view the only reason why at the of the constitution, or the only ministerial position which is provided for in the constitution is that of the attorney general, is that when you are appointed an attorney general, you are appointed an attorney general for the whole country. A party or a president may appoint you as attorney general, but once appointed, you are the attorney general for the whole country and you are to ensure that every citizen of the country is given justice or has access to justice and fair trial so when i hear former attorney generals and deputy attorney generals mount or grant interview and make certain statements aligning in no uncertain turn to one pot political party. Um, it's, it's something that worries me. And um, as a former president of the bar, I think you have to open a debate in that area about the proper rule 
of attorney generals or former attorney generals having regard particularly to Article 88 of the Constitution 1992. Let's go back and see the latest Dominica Ine about which the CJ has complained. At the end of the process, has your faith in the judiciary as a final arbiter in an electorate, has it been enhanced or has it been weakened? His answer before you joined was that it hasn't only been strengthened, but it has been enhanced. What would you say? Just a yes or no, and then you can expand first uh, in detail for me what, why you give him the uh, specific answer. Well, I, I mean, unsurprisingly, I would say that uh, I would say no to that. And I say no um, because building on the 2018 election petition, I expected the Supreme Court, you know, to be more faithful to legal precedent. I expected the Supreme Court, you know, to be more open in, a, in the application of the law um, for purposes of holding the election, the election management body, that is the uh, Electoral Commission, you know, accountable. I expected the Supreme Court to apply faithfully the rules of procedure uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, adducing evidence to prove the petitioner's case and so on. Um, what we saw was a Supreme Court that was, uh, you know, constantly, um, you know, putting the headers uh, in the way of uh, the petitioner in terms of uh, adducing evidence to prove the petitioner's case. And I'm sure for ordinary Ghanaians or the electorate generally, the fact that the Supreme Court judges, all nine of them, on almost every application, was unanimous in, you know, rejecting and dismissing the case of the petitioner um, was um, very telling in terms of the open-mindedness, you know, of the justices as far as the petition was concerned. And for me, as a lawyer, um, one of the things that I thought, you know, was uh, a bit disturbing was the lack of reasons Okay, because adjudication is a process of accountability. And so for me, it is okay to dismiss an application brought by a petitioner uh, for one relief or the other. Um, I mean, whether, you know, I mean, a substantive or procedural. Um, but it is another thing, okay, to fail to apply the rules or procedure in a manner that uh, enhances you know, the account, I mean, accountability um, uh, process. Okay, so for me, the, I mean, at the end of the day, the petition actually, um, you know, I mean, uh, um, dampened my hopes with respect to the independence of the judiciary and its ability, you know, to hold um, the, the Electoral Commission in particular accountable. Okay, so that's Dominic uh, Ayini. Now, we, we have the story, we have the background. So Dominic Aini was hauled before the court for remarks he had made. He apologized, his lawyer apologized. That was in February. Then in May, he said something. And then uh, the Lord Chief Justice uh, put up a letter today. They're, they're getting it for me briefly. They'll get me the letter shortly, and then we've already read it. So it's on the basis of this that the, um, the Chief Justice put up the letter. This is the letter that he put up. And I jump to the third paragraph. These comments are made against the backdrop of the Supreme Court discharging Dominic Aini on a charge of contempt, which you have now seen, for similar comments made against members of the Supreme Court during the election petition hearing. Dr. Aini apologized profusely, we know that. Uh, so the last paragraph, his lordship, the Chief Justice, therefore finds his alleged disparaging comment, comment totally unacceptable and would like to investigate this matter further. Please find, attach a copy of an extract from the article published. So, uh, that's, that's the letter from the Chief Justice. Now we want to just do some education. So we're going to uh, go through, they'll put up the Legal Profession Act. So we want to understand who is this General Legal Counsel? What work do they do? And, uh, and, um, and um, how do we think they are going to deal with this petition from the Chief Justice? Uh, I believe there it is, yes. Okay, so this is called from uh, Act 32, which is the Legal Profession Act. And is, uh, Section 1 deals with the mandate of the General Legal Council, and it's as follows. They'll put it on the screen. The General Legal Council, as established in existence before the commencement of this act, is responsible for the legal profession and, in particular, 
A, for the organization of legal education, and B, for upholding standards of professional conduct. I think it is the B that the Chief Justice is petitioning Dominic Aini, is petitioning the Council against uh, Dominic Aini for the upholding, uh, for upholding standards of professional conduct within the legal profession. Let's move on. Section 1-2 provides, the constitution of the council is set out in the first schedule. So we are now going to talk about who and who make up the council, and it's set out in the first schedule. We have some photographs representing the people, so you can look at it, and that's where we'll bring the story to an end. Okay. Uh, the first schedule of the act, uh, the general legal council, it says, subject to this paragraph, the governing body of the council consists of the chairman, which is the chief justice, the deputy chairman and two most senior justices of the Supreme Court after the chairman and the deputy chairman referred to in subparagraphs two. It goes on, the other members of the council, you can see it here, B, the attorney general, C, the head of the faculty of law at the University of Ghana, D, three persons nominated by the minister, four members of the bar elected by the Ghana Bar Association. Okay, so, so you get that. That's, that's the composition. Now, let's now look at the photographs of the person. So, in effect, the Lord Chief Justice, Mr. Justice Eni Yeboah, himself the petitioner in this matter, is supposed to be the chairman of the General uh, Legal Council. Uh, that's, that's Justice Eni Yeboah, who is chairman of the General Legal Council. That's his photograph, the Lord Chief Justice. He's the chairman of the General Legal Council. And it says three senior justices of the Supreme Court so we go there, they are Justice um, Jules Doche, if you like. He has his name there, Maulom. Uh, Justice Maulom Doche is also on the General Legal Council, representing or filling the space of three senior justices of the Supreme Court. Then you have Justice Paul Bafoboni, my good friend. Uh, there he is. He also uh, is representing the, one of the senior, senior, three of the senior justices of the Supreme Court. And then you have Mr. Justice Yawapau, uh, who is also on the General Legal Council. Remember, Justice Yao Apao was on the bench uh, in the matter that Dominic Aini apologized, and he even made some remarks in relation to that. So Yao Apao is here. Okay, let's move on to the rest. Godfrey Yabu Adami is the Attorney General Leader of the Bar. He's also on the General Legal Council. Uh, next to him is Mr. Alfred Tuyayabua, who is the president's nominee for the deputy attorney general position. He's currently the president of the uh, Bono Ahafo Bar, or if you like, president of the Bono Bar. He's been nominated by the president to be deputy attorney general. He also is on the general legal council as a nominee of the attorney general. Then you have um, Mr. Justin Amenuvo, who was counsel in the matter uh, during the, um, the election petition and who was in court when Dominic Aini rendered that uh, faithful apology. Justin Amenuvo is also on the General Legal Council. And then you have Raymond Atuguba. Uh, Professor Atuguba is the Dean of the Faculty of Law at the University of Ghana. He also sits on the General Legal Council. So this is the composition of the council. <laughs> so Max Olopokwa Jiman is here. He is the... Um, the director of legal education. He's a member of the General Legal Council as well. And then this is our good friend, Anthony Forsen, is the president of the Ghana Bar Association. He's also a member of the General uh, Legal Council. And then we have Mr. Christopher Archer, whose photograph we couldn't get, but uh, he's a son of the legendary Philip Archer, who is a former Chief Justice. Christopher Archer is also a nominee of the Attorney General, and uh, uh, he is also uh, on the General Legal Council. Now you know the members of the General Legal Council. Now I have a simple question, and um, the Chief Justice is, the, is really the complainant in this matter. He's the one sort of suing, if you like. So I'm going to a Latin phrase that will suggest to me that the Chief Justice might not participate in this sitting of the General Legal Council. He's the chairman of the council, actually. There's a deputy chairman, and there's uh, the, the, the other people. But I, I, they'll, they'll give me a Latin phrase right now, which is drawn from uh, this little book of mine, which other people have. It's entitled Lawyer's Latin, and uh, it's by John Gray, a, a British uh, solicitor who is Queen's Counsel. Um, I'm looking for the Latin. Yeah, there it is. So this Latin uh, axiom might be the reason why the Lord Chief Justice may not sit on the matter. Nemo Judas in Cosa Sua means that nobody should be judge in his own case no judge should preside over a matter in which he has a personal interest or involvement it's a canon of natural justice so we believe that because of this axiom nemo judas in cosa soa the lord chief justice mr justice in may not be able to be members of 
uh, uh, part of that legal counsel that we showed you, the team of legal counsel that we showed you. Okay, so as I said, this is a very touchy issue. It's sensitive, so we cannot cast a verdict. We don't want to be in trouble. We won't cast a verdict. Dominic Aini is could be in trouble with the Chief Justice. Civil society have expressed their views on the matter. We have given you the facts of the matter, and that's where we end our story.